Hey guys, good afternoon. Shin is here. And Aimer. What's up, guys? <laughs> Let's get started. Just having a little bite before we get going. Okay. Um, Demon Slayer there on Twitch. What's going on, guys? Let's get right down to business here on the Masquerade Vork. Huh? You may notice this is red label, even though I saw that we were actually just, um, actually Bandai just reprinted this kit, I believe, uh, because I think we just got some in or we're just about to get some in here at a USA Gundam store. So kind of uh, interesting timing, it was not intentional, but it kind of works out. If you guys are interested in picking up one, uh, I guess it will be available. I mean, from here and I'm sure everywhere else too, if Bandai recently reprinted it, so check it out. Anyway, um, honestly, really not too much advantage to getting the Verka over the OVA version. Um, it, had this kit come out later, the advantage would be that it comes with water side decals, but it unfortunately does not. So you guys will see, I'll have like the full uh, review video. But yeah, only comes with sticker decals and a bunch of dry transfers. So not really ideal. Uh, the Verka, or sorry, the um, OVA version also doesn't come with water slides, unfortunately. But Bandai does make a water slide decal sheet of the Verka decals for this kit, fortunately. So there we go. I've got that. Um, I'll not be using that like today in this live stream here, obviously, but later on. Uh, I started the MG Fulmer Unicorn version yesterday. Awesome. I really like this kit. I mean, the it's got its issues, I guess. And, um, you know, people have their complaints about it, which I think is all fair. Uh, but, I mean, I really, I've always liked this kit, so... I think it's just a really, really good looking kit when it's all put together and everything. Uh, particularly when it's painted as well, of course. But yeah, I mean, it does have its issues. I think just like the proportions of it are, are really nice. But yeah, wish that it would have come with water side decals originally. It's unfortunate that it didn't. But so yeah, if you guys have seen the live stream last Friday or seen the post online about uh, talking about GBWC, this is obviously one of the kits that I'm putting together for uh, my GBWC entry that I'm going to be working on this year. So what I'm doing right now is just building it up uh, just so that I can start working on um, kind of how everything's going to be all laid out, which again, yeah, if you saw the live stream last week with Ryan, we talked a lot about that, huh? You know, the first thing I need to do is just kind of get everything all set up, basically. And then I can really get to work on everything from that point on for. So, anyway. That's what's going on. It did take me quite a little... I'll say, like, a huge amount of time longer than usual. But a good amount of time longer than usual. Just getting this kit ready. Uh, to be just snap built for the time being just because I was being like extra careful with it uh, which I feel like already kind of a little bit puts me off on the on the wrong foot as far as like having that GBWC mindset just because I feel like you know if you look at a lot of um, a lot of uh, like really the kind of builders who do really well in competitions, right? They'll like, it's not uncommon at all for them to run through like a couple of the kit, like in the process. What I mean, like they might have um, two of this kit that they end up using like for their entry. Just cause like through the construction and like maybe you're trying customizing or scribing or whatever else, having multiple of the kit you know, allows you to, um, if you make mistakes or if you, you know, maybe try out a part or try out some kind of modification, it doesn't really work. Or, uh, 
what a lot of people do. One of the characters for their like photography later on. Uh, like um, photography purposes, so they can have like the original kit uh, stood next to their custom modified one, right? So anyway, for a lot of different reasons, it's pretty normal to have multiple of the kit that you're using. And, oh well, thinking of it, I'm sure I do. I'm certain I do have another Master Grade Unicorn kit, like that's already built up that I've got like just at home somewhere. So actually I probably do. But anyway, uh, point is I was definitely taking my time on this one just to get it all ready, just to get it snap building again. Anyway, like I said, so it's going to try to only use the one kit. Not that it would be like a, a terrible thing if I had to dip into my backlog and pull out another kit in order to use it for this. But that's fine. Anyway, yeah, this kit does have a fair amount of parts too. I mean, obviously just because of the nature of the design and the whole transforming aspect of it. I mean, it's a relatively parts heavy uh, model kit. Even for a 2007 MG, quite an old one. Um, Shin asks, what are my thoughts on Mecha Gaikotsu? Um, I don't normally watch every now and then, uh, like if a video comes up and if it's like something related to what I'm looking for, like I'll, I'll watch a video, but I don't watch. Um, my opinion is that he makes uh, pretty good quality um, Gunpla content, so yeah. I mean, obviously, his videos do pretty well. So, where is um, this part? Oh yeah, always been a very tricky part of the construction of this kit. I feel like is the vent covers on the front of the chest, because the way that it's shown in the manual is not like very clear. Pretty easy to figure out, I guess, but I always felt that it's kind of tricky. Um, what version of the Unicorn Gundam would you recommend? I was thinking of getting the RG for a custom. Well, if you want, depending on what you want to do as far as like customization, if you want to just like just custom paint, yeah, the RG is probably the best uh, version to get for that. There's kind of pros and cons to every version. Um, like for example, this kit, like I said, I do really like the design of it. Uh, the look and the proportions of it. But if you want it to do anything more than like just kind of stand there, this is not really a good kit for that. If you want like the ultimate best version that comes with a lot of accessories and also um, fully transforms and has really good posability, it's a really solid kit and has all the lights and everything in it, then it's gotta be the uh, MGX. I think is like the definitive version of the unicorn. Um, the PG is also great, but that one also, um, it just can't really do a whole lot. So again, if you wanted to just stand there and look cool and be huge, the PG is great. Um, the mega size is also really nice. If you want something that's huge, uh, has a lot of detail, uh, but, and also the proportions of the mega size are also really nice too. I think the proportions of the mega size uh, are based off of the HG. Anyway, it's very very similar proportions to the HG anyway, which I really like. Also doesn't transform. Uh, obviously the mega size is more detailed though and is much larger. So there's a lot of, uh, I mean, there's, like I said, pros and cons to every different version. Overall, like just uh, in terms of like good quality for the money. The problem with the MGEX is that it's very expensive because of the LED unit. So that's the only issue with that kit. Um, so I think um, the RG is nice just because it's kind of the best overall. It uh, It's a really, really good kit. It doesn't cost a ton and it kind of does everything that you would want it to do. So um, 
the only thing is that like if you're wanting to do a lot of modification on it then probably the hd would be the better route just because the rg just because the nature of it being an rg it's going to be a more complex kit probably more challenging to if you're like wanting to do a lot of mods on the design or something um so yeah depending on what you're wanting to do with it i hope that's helpful well yeah like i said there's kind of a lot of things to consider for every version of the kit uh, would you rather have the MGEX or PG Unicorn? For me personally, I would rather have the MGEX. I mean, uh, I've not painted the PG. Um, and I like the look of the PG, but again, it's like it doesn't really, it's just big and doesn't really do anything. If I want a really big unicorn, I would just go for the um, Mega Size. If I wanted one that has lights, I would rather have the MGEX. PG Mark II review when? Uh, no plans on doing that anytime soon. I don't have one, nor do I have any intention of getting one. Let's see. I think I got that right. Um, the Mark II is a design that I kind of have mixed feelings for. It kind of depends on the version. The HGC Revive, I think, looks great. The Perfect Grade, I'm not, I can't, can't say that I'm a fan of the, uh, the overall look and shape of the uh, PG. It's got that kind of retro derpiness to it, but not so much in a charming way as like some other older kits, in, in my opinion. You know. Alright. I think despite being a little bit shaky on the construction here, I feel like I think I'm getting it together should be able to manage it like because like i said i'm i have built this kit a number of times in different forms i built this exact kit the verka before as well a long time ago so it's not my first rodeo with this guy but it is always a little bit of a challenge just because it's a very unique build so there we go all that effort, <laughs> like, I love it. All that effort and all that unique construction to just this little white block, that's all. But it's all about what it can do, right? It can transform, that's the main thing. So, gonna go from that to the head, let's see. Hello, I am here because I cannot build at the office, so I'll watch you instead. What's up, Chris? So I think that's everything here for the head. All right. We do have some stickers, which I'm just going to say pass on for the moment. Uh, plain white looks so good. Yeah. I mean, I, um, again, if you saw the live stream last week uh, for my well, competition entry, I do plan on keeping it in unicorn mode. Um, but I will be doing like a review video ahead of that, so I will transform it, but then it'll just be back to unicorn mode where it will stay. And also, don't plan on using the weapons at all, so that's kind of one nice thing. I don't have to worry about modeling those parts of the kit. So we got that, let's see here. Face. Uh, should have had multi hues of white. Yeah, this came out at a time kind of uh, before Bandai was really doing that, right? So understandable that it didn't. Um, that kind of really only started, well, yeah, it really kind of only started with the uh, RG, uh, RX 72, and then the. Um, uh, Arc 78 to 3.0. We're kind of the uh, progenitors of the multi-tone coloring 
obviously a, a feature of the RG line now. And since then, anyway, but uh, we haven't really seen it too much in Master Grades until probably the MG uh, New and Sosby Verka. I think. Uh, or maybe some of the first, a couple of the first MGs to really do like the multiple, multiple shades of color. Uh, if I remember correctly, right? But I don't know. Uh, at least, um, I mean, for me, I, I generally also like the unicorn just as one solid color. And yeah, that's how I plan on having it. Are you a twin eye or a visor gang? Uh, well, I think I'm, well, for my plans for this kit, I will be just having the visor. And I'm contemplating even having the, the visor even covered up. Let's see. Um, like if you look at the Hang on, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm doing this transformation here properly. If you look at the um, the one-to-one -one scale new Gundam, I guess this was a thing like in the animation as well, but uh, in the new Gundam, oh yeah, I forgot that this kit uh, doesn't have like a clear green piece for the visor, it just has a, a sticker you had to put over it, right? Um, the new Gundam, in Fukuoka, yes, uh, the one-to-one -one scale new Gundam. Well, when they first built it, they had like that kind of cover over the eyes and all the security tape and stuff over it. I'm thinking that's probably what I'm going to do something similar with this. So, um, the eyes or visor question. Well, I mean, I'll have the visor, I guess, technically as the option, but I'm probably going to be covering it up. Okay. I got that, and then this piece here. I've always found the stickers, uh -oh, stickers for the camera on the head of this kit to be kind of funny because they're s almost like invisible. Not like that you can't, not like I don't know, invisible in the sense that. Uh, they just kind of end up being hidden in the design, so there's not really too much of a point to put those on there. Oh, oops, I was supposed to put this one on here first. Hang on. This guy on here. I'm surprised I'm getting this together <laughs> so well without having issues. I always struggle with the head of this kit, um, as I recall, just, just because of the way the parts have to go, because of the full transformation of the head, it's impressive but it makes it a bit of a challenge to get together properly. I'm surprised I did that uh, without having any issues. So there you go. Pat myself on the back for that one. And we're on to the arms. Let's do it. I've adapted that to almost every build. I love the subtle shifts. Yeah, I have. Um, so like one work in progress that I just wanted to quickly finish up before moving on to this more, much more major project. Um, there's kind of a, a couple of works in progress that I'm just gonna try to be like finishing here. One of them is the uh, HG God of Gundam kit bash that I was working on, if you guys remember from last year. I set it aside and uh, wanted to come back and finish it up. So. Uh, I am doing some very, very subtle uh, different ar colors on the armor on that kit. You guys will, sh will see it very soon. It's actually like, done. I just need to do the final top coat on it, which I was hoping to be able to do today, but uh, don't think that I'll have time. So probably come in tomorrow and lay down that uh, final top coat on that guy, and I can show you guys. Um, the other thing that I'm doing with that on the note of that kit, and you guys will see in the video, but uh, tried out the E7 paints. I've not tried them before. So, like I said, kind of uh, multitasked by finishing up that work in progress and also um, testing out the E7 line of paints. First, 
before continuing on that thought, just want to say thank you to Gray. Uh, I just got to this. The joints are tight. Hey, uh, thank you to Gray for the super chat there. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And the joints are tight. Yeah, I'm finding that I don't, it's not something that I remember about this kit, but just kind of putting it together, it does feel like I'm feeling that little bit of tightness there. There is a lot of, uh, there's no poly caps for one. There is a lot of um, ABS in this kit. Uh, so it's kind of fortunate for me that my plans for the kit don't require a whole lot of um, like modification in terms of like to the frame at all, because it's basically just going to be laying down on a base jabber in unicorn mode. So uh, we kind of joked about this in the live stream that I, I can actually probably get away with like hardly even touching the, the back side of the kit because it's going to be laying down on its back. So uh, that's kind of convenient for me. But um, yeah, the, the ABS frame, which normally probably would be a concern depending on what you want to do with the kit, uh, I think uh, fortunately won't be too much of an issue for me for what I have planned for it, which is, which is nice because there'll be a lot more work required. I think probably f the unicorn will probably be one of the easier parts of the the entire project. I think probably the, the base jabber, honestly, will probably be one of the elements that's going to actually require the most work just for what I want to do with that. But that and just kind of the entirety of the mounting process in general, getting everything like all mounted up. But yeah, we talked about it a lot. Uh, the other day with Ryan and we will more in the future but yeah like I said for now just trying to get a couple of other things finished up uh, Ryan's also got his kind of side project that he's working on getting finished up and I'm uh, just getting everything built and situated it's kind of the main thing for right now uh, another interesting thing though that I am planning on doing with the kit, with the unicorn, is uh, even though it's going to be in unicorn mode, uh, I am planning on painting the psycho frame in. What am I doing here with this? Okay, okay. trying to figure out the orientation of these parts. Painting the psycho frame in uh, silver uh, as it is going to be uh, deactive and mostly not showing, but there will probably be a couple little bits, and I think I'll probably have like a at least one kind of like panel of armor being removed. As I talked about, the plan is to show the unicorn as like the whole thing is like showing the unicorn as it's being uh, like trans transferred, um, moved. And I want to have the, that like uh, maybe the crew has like is stopped and maybe just performing some checks or something like that out uh, outside the base jabber. So there'll be some crew outside in space there and I want to have maybe one or two panels of armor off and that'll show a little bit of the psycho frame and I want to have it painted silver as it is uh, deactive I think will look really cool I've seen uh, Matt Matt's build if you guys know uh, Matt Matt or just Matt on uh, Twitter he did a really really awesome paint job I believe is on the RG kit where he painted it uh, he in uh, muddled it in destroy mode but with the entirety of the frame is all um, so or the uh, psycho frame is silver I should say the regular like frame is just kind of a normal gray the psycho frame is silver so yeah it's really it's a really cool look I like just how clean it looks and yeah one of the things that I really want to the, the way that I want to show the Unicorn Gundam in my scene is I want it to look like this like white monolith, right? So it should be very clean. There will be some color on it, which will actually be coming mostly from the um, decals and um, the tape, security seals, tape on it. Which I think will look nice. So that and um, also, I was thinking about painting a stripe, maybe like on the leg or something. You guys see, like, what would be a good example? Um, it's not like any Gumpla 
that have this as like a part of the design. It's usually like a custom thing people add. There's like some MSV designs and stuff that have this. Oh, there's a nub that I missed. There's some MSV designs that have this where uh, it's just like a thin like color band stripe on the leg, on the thigh. Thinking about doing something like that here on the unicorn as it is meant to be like um, finished, but not like ready to deploy finished. So like it could be just uh, something, I mean, just kind of using our imaginations, something on there as just like a, a marker of it being still a test unit or something like that, right? Or in a testing state, something like that. So, yeah, thinking about that. Anyway, possibly, I think it could look cool. Some people are crazy enough to put LEDs in this. Yeah, what's going, what's going on, Jim? I wouldn't, uh, and certainly don't plan to, but, yep, you certainly see people doing it from time to time. All right, uh, I just got the Mega Size Unicorn Gundam Destroy Mode. It's an awesome kit, I do like that kit a lot. Another uh, future work in progress that I'm looking forward to working on is going to be taking the Mega Size kit and uh, modifying it to be in Unicorn mode. Um, I actually considered doing that uh, for my competition entry instead of this project that I'm doing. Uh, but after talking, actually uh, talking with, was it Ryan or Josh? I think it was Josh, actually. After talking with Josh about it, I've been talking kind of with both of them about different ideas. Uh, but after talking with Josh about it, uh, we both kind of came to the agreement that I think this is the better idea. Why does this part feel... Okay, it feels upside down, but it's not. It's correct, okay. Just want to make sure. But there is the issue of this piece, which I missed putting in uh, here. Okay. Should... Okay, yeah, I need to take that off. That should have been there before that. Let's take that off too. There we go. Right. I thought something felt kind of strange about that part. Uh, can't wait to see that. Yeah, I think it'll be really cool. Um, who was it? I think it was Andy. Uh, backstepped, if you guys follow him, I think was the one that was working on that. And I uh, just wanted to honestly just copy his idea. I thought it'd be a fun project to try. So I'm sure I'll be going about it, you know, if and whenever I do get back to to that. Uh, well, I shouldn't say get back to the project because I've not even started. I do have the kit built up. Like I have a, I have a Mega Size Unicorn uh, that's just snap built. But uh, if and when I ever start the project, I'm sure it'll, mine will, you know, come out. And I don't think Andy's ever finished his for one <laughs> either. But uh, whenever I get around to working on mine, I'm sure it'll be different. That was actually something, what was it? That we talked about. Oh yeah, that was also with Ryan in the live stream last week. Talked about like when it comes to just like sharing ideas for custom builds or dioramas or whatever, like with people, like there's, there's really not any point to like being secretive about like, you don't want to give away a good idea because you're worried about people like copying your idea before you finish it. Like, like even if someone were to copy your idea, the end result's guaranteed to be different, if not like drastically different. So it's not really a point to being secretive about your ideas in this hobby, I feel like. And it's just not fun. It's more fun to share your ideas. Any decisions on your Sanju design? Um, not that much, William. I think probably the thing is I just had, I need to get the kits built so that I can like um, start messing around with it, like swapping parts and just kind of seeing what looks good. Um, but I think probably not going to have any um, like parts that are gonna show like uh, mid painting. I uh, got talked about that where I was thinking about having some parts where it um, there would be like panels of armor 
or sections that are in like a kind of epoxy yellow or primer gray kind of to show that it's in the process of being repainted. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think there's just no, it's just a, too much of a risk <laughs> in that it's supposed to look ugly, but I think it's just, there's just no way around it looking uh, too ugly. <laughs> it's just not going to look good, I feel like. Maybe for another project or something in, in the future, I may try that. Um, and it would be an interesting thing to try because I think it's it, it would be a certainly a unique uh, challenge to try to paint a kit to make it look like it's in the process of being painted, <laughs> like uh, as if it was a mobile suit. Anyway, uh, so I don't think I'm going to do that. But I think what it's going to be is just um, a little bit of mix uh, mixing some of the parts. But yeah, then the question is that like, if it's a, if it's a Stein part, then it should be in the Stein colors because if it's a Shinanju part, then that means it's already been rebuilt as the Shinanju part. So it would be red. It wouldn't still be white because that would mean that they uh, remodeled the shape of the armor part to like the Shinanju and then painted it white ultimately, as we know from the story, then to ultimately then repaint it red. Anyway, it doesn't make sense. So I'll have to play around with it still, although I think one thing that I am pretty set on, and again, I'll have to test it out and just kind of see how it looks. But I think one thing that will work well will be um, using, uh, what do I say? Uh, the sleeves parts, having the sleeves parts unfinished, I think is probably what will be a good, uh, a good spot to show like the transition where it's like kind of mostly done, except for maybe the sleeves parts. And this was, um, I can't remember who it was at the moment. So sorry, off the top of my head, I don't recall, but someone in my um, Discord server brought up the idea of, because I talked about in the live stream, maybe having the, the sleeves parts just kind of like uh, filed down so that they're just like flat panels instead of having like the raised like gold insignia kind of on there. And uh, someone brought up the idea of doing doing that and then also including like some, um, like make some like modified, just basically like drill holes basically. I'll try to make it look a little bit nicer, but like some small holes to show like where like the mounting points are for like the gold trim parts that are going to be added. So I think that's a that's a good idea and I'll probably will do something like that ultimately. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to I want to use some of the Stein parts, I think. I'm just not sure which ones and which ones will work well you know, color wise and everything else. So we'll see. But yeah. Mm. Always been flattered if someone pinches some design ideas here and there. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's been a couple times over the years where I've gotten a message from someone uh, like asking, like, "Hey, I really liked your your work on this particular kit. Uh, I want to try it myself. Like, would you mind if I basically copy your idea?" Essentially, yeah, by all means. And I've seen it done a couple times where people have like basically like, copied. Uh, like a custom build of mine. That's cool. Yep, yep. What was it? like um, one in particular was well, I think like the E free, like the colors on, like the MSV colors I did on the E free. I think I saw someone like did their own take on that. Like didn't have the modifications that I did, but basically just copied the, the color scheme, which was like a dark green. MSV style kind of color scheme on the RE100 E Free. So, yeah. I'm cool with it. Uh, if it were a diorama, I could see tarp or something being used to accentuate the mid repaint look. Uh, tarp could be a cool idea. I actually, on that note, glad you bring it up uh, because um, not necessarily uh, tarp over repainted parts on the Shinanju, but I do want to use, um, like I said, for the unicorn. I don't think I'm going to have to take this part off. I want that to be tighter. Anyway, later. Um, 
on the unicorn, I talked about how I wanted to have like maybe like the tarp covering the visor on the eyes, similar like to with the new Gundam in animation and with the one one statue when it was built. And I think that I will also um, include like some straps. So um, it's not like uh, tarp, but like cloth straps or whatever it would be, whatever kind of material it would be, or straps you would use for an 18 meter tall mobile suit. Uh, on the unicorn, like basically like strapping it to the base jabber. So like you would uh, strap something down if you're hauling it in a truck, right? I think that will make a lot of sense to also just kind of help illustrate that it's in transport, right? So, and it won't be like over the whole kit, but I'm thinking like, so let me show you. Just get this last bit put on here, finish up this arm. And I can show you what I mean. Should not put it together in that way. Yeah, you can feel, you can maybe hear how crispy those joints are. It was a little bit snug. Oof, okay. Uh, so like, let's see, visual aid. If, imagine the unicorns laid down in the base jabber like that, right? Having some like connections, maybe like from here on the arm or like from here on like the side of the chest, have like a little modification where I'll have to like uh, scribe or chisel out some kind of, or scratch build, just some little detail here on the side of the chest where there's like a strap connected here and like stretching over the shoulder to like the, the side of the base jabber basically. So not like a strap going all the way across, but like from the mobile suit at some point onto the base jabber, kind of like that. A couple of them, not like a ton. It's not gonna be like a spider web of strapping all over the thing, but a couple I think would also make sense, right? There's our top half, all done. Now, do we do waist or legs first? Waist, okay, that's good. That's how I like it. I hate having legs built and then not being able to put them on the kit. So I always like to have the waist built first. Where are you finding old unicorn for cockets? kits? I'm seeing so many pop up as lately. Well, Folsom, as I mentioned at the start of the stream, uh, this kit apparently re just recently got a reprint because um, either we just got some in here at USA Gun Store or we're just about to. Um, but yeah, this one, this this actual one that I'm building is one that I've had for a long time. Uh, U.S. military use straps, not chains. So yeah, okay. So yeah, I definitely am against using chains. I will not you be using any chains. That, that just visually, it would not be what I would want to use. So no, definitely not using chains. But yeah, straps I think will look cool. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. So this this kit that I'm building is one that I've had for a long time. Uh, but yes, the kit has just recently been reprinted, I guess. So uh, The Snanju, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the Snanju Verka also has just been reprinted or is scheduled to be reprinted or what. I don't know. But... Oh, there's another nub that I missed, a real teeny tiny one on this psycho frame part. And the psycho frame part's always a bit challenging because of them being like a... Oh, it's not a nub, it's just kind of a little bit of flash on there actually, okay. Um, the psycho frame parts being in uh, like a neon clear, it's a little bit difficult to see what you're working on. I think that's right. Keep feeling like I've forgotten or like left off parts, but not yet. I'm holding it together. Hmm. Can't reprint the Shinanju. Have to save the plastic for a narrative sign version. Yeah, well, I mean, um, to your point, they're probably, Bandai's probably, you know, gotten the molds for the MG Shinanju out in order to reprint that because it'll have a couple of the runners from the Master Grade Shinanju. So if they've got the molds out, they might as well reprint the, the Master Grade Shinanju Verka. Uh, so I don't know. 
I don't know offhand. I could check though. Is the MG Banshee not the Verka worth it? Um, so you're talking about like the like the one with the armed armor VN and PS, the original Banshee, not the Norn. Uh, just the standard release kit. It's basically this kit with the Banshee parts. So I mean, like the issues that this kit does have uh, will be will exist in the Banshee. Now I don't know if the Banshee uh, uses as much ABS for the frame as this one does. I can't remember. And one of you guys, if you know for sure, you can uh, let us know on that. I'm wondering if that's maybe one where they switched to using uh, more uh, just PS polystyrene plastic for the frame for that one. I don't know. That would be an advantage, but otherwise, I mean, it's basically the same kit as this. Uh, Verka has beautiful gold-plated parts, though. Which Verka? The Banshee Verka? Oh, yeah, maybe that's what you're talking about, the Banshee Verka. The Banshee uses ABS, uh, but a better blend. So there you go. So yeah, I mean, there's some advantages to it. It's essentially this. Uh, my favorite tall geese between the one, two, and three. That's a tough question. Uh, I like the I like them all like for different reasons. I like the one just because I think it looks really cool and like the all white color scheme, kind of similar like this. Um, the two though, I like the altered color scheme for that. The um, blue with the yellow accents, I think, also does look really nice. So just like color scheme wise, the one and the two, and then I guess the three as well. But uh, three has that all white color scheme, and then like some really awesome weapons. I think the weapons. Uh, of the three are kind of the most impressive. So I guess the Tulgis three, I guess would be my favorite, but um, I do like them all. Uh, I don't know, just kind of as they are. Okay. Ooh. Uh, Banshee, not the Norn and MG, uh, it ain't worth it. The VN does not go sideways. Yeah, the, the trouble you're probably going to have with that is, um, the unfortunate thing about this kit in kind of its many different forms is that it just doesn't pose well. It's a, you can, and it certainly can pose, but not as good as other versions. So yeah, I mean, it's not like there's pros and cons as we were talking about earlier the different versions of the unicorn. Um, posing is not the strength of this version. So it's something to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind, which I'm definitely not doing, would probably be to be cutting some of these pegs because I know I'm definitely going to be disassembling the kit, so I'm not making it easy on myself by not modifying the kit at all thus far. And that's going to make it more challenging to disassemble, unfortunately, but okay. Didn't really think about that. And I'll probably pay the price for it, but hopefully won't have anything too major. Break or anything like that. Oh yeah. It's interesting kind of, uh, even though, like I said, I've, I've built the kit before, probably a couple times in different forms. Like I've built this exact kit, the Unicorn Verka before, a long time ago. The, uh, the MG Banshee I've built. Um, I've not built an MG Phoenix before, just because of the nub marks. So the gates, nubs on that gold are just awful. Speaking of pros and cons, there's basically no pros to, uh, if you want a mash grade Phoenix, there's not really any good reason to get the, uh, the master grade. Or, sorry, if you want a unicorn phoenix, that's what I mean to say. There's not any good reason to get the master grade. It's expensive, and the gates, the nubs on it are just awful. Very bad. Now, anyway, I was going to say, having built this kit before, uh, but not recently, so like I, I definitely wouldn't be able, I mean, I think I could probably figure it out. I wouldn't be able to build it from memory, is what I'm gonna say. But I think I could, like, I could figure it out. But it's interesting to build it, and like, even though I don't remember, like, 
the build exactly. Uh, like it's all very familiar, right? which I guess makes sense. It's not like uh, too surprising, I suppose, but it's kind of interesting. I like when I was just working on the parts and thinking like, okay, I can recognize like this part I can recognize obviously as a skirt part of the unicorn. Okay, sure. But how exactly it goes on, how exactly it goes together, like I didn't really think about when I was getting the parts prepared. But like now like putting it together, like it's it's all so familiar now. One thing that I hate about the transformation of the unicorn is that uh, any version of it there's no locking mechanism for the opening back skirt. So whenever you're trying to do your posing of it and everything, you're inevitably going to be pushing down the back skirt over and over again. And it's like, you have to just save that for last. Get all the other transformation, all, the other po all your other posing all done first. And then once everything's done, then pop open the back skirt. Because otherwise, you're guaranteed to press it back down. Hello, I'm watching a live in South Korea. Annyeonghasehyo. Uh, uh, what's your favorite gym? That's a good question. I don't know. Favorite gym? Um, I'll have to get back to you on that. I don't know. I couldn't say. All right. The side skirts are actually meant to be completed like later on, but oh, always nervous putting pressure on the kit but all right mg banshee norn should have been a normal release change my mind yeah i mean you're right on that it should have been it is very odd that it wasn't but uh, you know i don't know There you go. And interestingly, like uh, that they did the Banshee Norn as two, they did multiple versions of the P Bandai release, right? So it would have made sense. I mean, like I would have understood if they would have done like the green Psycho Frame version as a P Bandai kit and the um, orange version as the normal release or something like that, right? But the fact that they, they were both. Uh, exclusives, kind of interesting. And then the uh, the Banshee Verka was also a P Bandai exclusive. So yeah, very odd. And all of those releases were like in the very early days of P Bandai. So it's not like today where we have quite a high percentage of releases are P Bandai. At that time, it wasn't that much the case. But I guess at that time, Bandai was a lot more kind of pure in what was getting a P Bandai release. So like at that time, P Bandai releases were pretty much all just designs that were like for the most for the most part like recolors with a handful of new parts. That's kind of what P Bandai was really at the start. And so I mean the Banshee does make sense to be a P Bandai release in that sense because it's just a recolor of a unicorn with a handful of new parts. Um but yeah, it's kind of odd, isn't it? Anyway, uh, who can get good? Oh, Banajar is worse than Mika. He's a brat. Um, oh man, that's a take that I can't get behind. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, when it comes to protagonists, I just can't. Uh, I have to go with Banajar over. Uh, I'm guessing by Mika, you mean Mikazuki, right? Yeah. What is your favorite PG? My favorite PG is actually probably the Exia. Uh, just because I think it gives you kind of like the best of everything. It gives you everything that you would want in a PG uh, from like the complexity and having a lot of gimmicks. Uh, and then it also has a lot of like extra gimmicks in the fact that it has the um, uh, light effects if you get the LED set for it and I would definitely recommend doing so it's kind of like the definitive way I mean like having the PGX yeah without the LEDs I mean it's still a good kit but I mean 
a lot of the reason why it's my favorite is just because I think the LED set for it is really nice. So, um, yeah, it's my favorite. Uh, and it has the stand. It's the one of the other main reasons for why I say that that's my favorite PG kit is just because of the fact that it includes a stand and you're actually able to do more with it. Because that's the thing, like when it comes to PG kits, is that they're big and impressive and they have a lot of gimmicks and a lot of parts and everything. Uh, but then you can't really do a whole lot with them. Uh, the X is the exception to that in that the stand makes it a lot easier to actually pose the kit. So that's one of the reasons why I particularly like it and recommend it to people. Um, okay, so working on the legs now, which are very parts heavy. So we're going to be here for a while. You guys brought something to snack on. Just the legs alone is probably going to take us a little bit of time here. Uh, was I supposed to rotate this earlier on? Anyway. What's that? I wish that this part would rotate and stay all the way down. Kind of doesn't really like to. Maybe I, just because I did it wrong. Maybe after taking the kit apart and putting it back together, maybe I'll get this to actually stay down all the way. This white part here that rotates around the front of the foot, it's kind of covers up the foot there. It never goes down all, quite all the way to actually be like flush on the ground. We'll have to work on that. Uh, what's your favorite unicorn unicorn armed armor? Uh, that's another tough one. I love the armed armor DE. It's a very cool shield. So many shields are just kind of very like lackluster. Like it's a shield. It's not that impressive. Not very cool. Like the Delta Plus is another one that has like a really cool shield. Uh, the Delta Chi, obviously, because of it's like ridiculous shield. But uh, the Armed Armor DE is really cool, I'll say. Um, my, I can definitely tell you my least favorite, easily, is the Armed Armor XC on the Banshee Norn. It's also just kind of very meh. It's like it's just kind of there. It's more like a decoration, whereas like all the other Armed Armor does like seem to have a point to it. The I know the Armed Armor XC does have a, a point in canon, but... Um, it's like visually, it's just kind of there and not really doing a whole lot of anything. I'll get on there. But uh, the VN and BS uh, are both really cool of the original Banshee, and uh, the DE is really cool. Still, am always going to regret not getting the um, uh, RG. Unicorn Bandesine version that included the shield. Not that I don't, I mean, like, I don't know what I would have done with it if I did. I don't like have like plans like, oh, I really want to do this, whatever custom project with that kit if I had it, but I don't have it. It's not, that's not the case. It's just that it's just a cool shield. And I wish I would have got that. Um, but there is like third party versions of a 144 scale DE shield that you can get. I mean, like, you can get one if you want. I think I I did get one, and I used one for... Uh, what was that kit? What was it HG Unicorn kit, I think, wasn't it? The one that I painted gold? I gave it the uh, Armed Armor shield. Actually, not painted gold. Um, did in gold using the... Um, what was that? Pigments. Like, uh, whatever they're called, anyway. I don't remember, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay. So we're done with a foot. After all that, here we are. Let me zoom in a little bit here for us. Um. Uh. Kyrgios, I'm guessing that's Curious. Can be expensive, especially if you want an updated version or a clear special version. 
I wish they would reprint reprint the uh, RG Unicorn Band Destiny. Yeah, it would be cool. Or if it was like if they made a a version of it that was a Gundam base exclusive that was like available, it would be cool too. Um, just so that it would be available again. It wouldn't be like a a full retail reprint, but it would be reprinted and it would be available for purchase, right? Completion, <laughs> completion of the foot. Now, let's see. Yes. Um. What did it say? Thighs and ankles transform, but the arms are just form and shoulders. What are you guys talking about? Anyway, uh, they did tease kits. What is it? Have you seen those third party 100 scale Stargazer and GPO2 kits coming out? Yes, G, I have seen both of those. Don't plan on getting or building either of them, but yeah, I've seen them. I've been curious about the MGEX. Yes, MGEX. Unicorn, I'm guessing is what you're talking about. It's a very cool kit, definitely. I uh, can highly recommend it as it's pretty much like the definitive version of the Unicorn. It's expensive, but if you're a Unicorn fan, it's the one to get, I feel like. Ankle joint is here. The larger part goes there. Oof. Oof. It's a scary sound. we were actually done with the foot before now we're done with the foot and now we can start on the rest of the leg right there okay because the ankle armor is also kind of included in the or the ankle whole whole ankle section is included as part of the ankle what am i saying the entirety of the ankle is included as a part of the construction to the foot there we go um, so that knee part goes here. Speaking of another idea that I have for my build is, um, let's see, having the knee. So I talked about maybe having um, one or two open armor panels to show like some of the internal detail and also to show some of like the uh, deactive psycho frame uh, also i think it would be cool to show maybe part of the part of the unicorn um, like transformed like a in particular i'm thinking like the knee so you know like the when it transforms to destroy mode the knee kind of extends out uh, and you get that big chunk of psycho frame that's like kind of sticking out under the knee armor thinking of having that like extend it out as an again like they're like in transporting the unicorn they're also kind of like maybe testing some of the systems or whatever and um having that part opened up just to maybe do some tests or maintenance or whatever and it's again another opportunity where I could show some of the psycho frame in silver i think would look cool so another idea I'm kind of playing with. If I think it will look cool, which I think it will. But yeah, I mean, every idea that will look cool just makes more work in the project as a whole. 
So, I mean, I do have to kind of keep time in mind as well how much time it's going to take to do some of these things. But I think, like, for these couple of ideas that I'm talking about related to the Masquerade Unicorn here are not necessarily very time consuming modifications to make. I mean, it's just like having an, a panel off, and I'll probably have to add some detail, like, add some just like scratch build detail to the inside of a of a panel, it's not really that big of a deal. Yeah, I can definitely tell though, disassembling this kit is not going to be fun. Yeah. Everything's kind of tight on this guy. Regretting not thinking more about that ahead of time. But I don't remember. I thought it was going to be more the case that stuff's going to be too loose. And I think it probably will be. Once I get to actually doing doing the review and moving stuff around and trying to pose and transform the kit and everything else, everything's probably going to loosen up quite a bit. So it should be fine. Just for the moment, everything is pretty tight. Which, I mean, is, is good, depending on what you want to do with the kit. But... Um, let's see. I just rebuilt my Fulmer Unicorn and glued the major collapsing issue areas like the knee, foot, skirt, uh, shoulder open as it was, as I was putting water slides on and clear coating it. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, this is the kind of kit, like I said, um, this kit certainly has its issues. And I think the good thing about this version of the unicorn is just how it looks. And if that's kind of your main motivation for wanting to get and build this kit is just for how good it looks and not necessarily what it can do, then I think it is probably a good idea to, yeah, go ahead and just glue some of the parts if they're giving you problems. Um, just because yeah, then you don't have to worry about stuff falling off or the transformation, like not looking right. If there's a part that's kind of like um, difficult to transform or difficult to keep it transformed, or whatever, it like keeps closing back up again or something like that. Yeah, you can just glue, just glue parts of it. If you're just wanting it to stand there and look cool in whatever pose. Oops, this part was supposed to go on later. And get to have my first fun of disassembly. Oops. I figure these parts probably need to go on first before that one, but I just took chances. Is the RG better than the MG, uh, Eni asked. Yeah, absolutely, in pretty much every way. Yep, that's certainly the case. It maintains the ability to be fully transformable in the smaller scale, which the HG does not. And also the RG is a much more solid kit than this. So yeah, the RG is definitely the better kit overall. <laughs> All right, there we go. Yeah, so thinking about just like having this knee part uh, just kind of opened up and extended out and maybe having like a little crew member here or something with a little tablet playing a uh, I don't know, Fruit Ninja or something. Could look pretty cool. Did you guys hear Adam hacking on his way out? <laughs> the live stream we were supposed to have on Monday. Well, actually, the live stream was supposed to be on uh, last Friday. And then we had to postpone it because 
uh, because of me, for getting to make the post the day before. And so the live stream was rescheduled to Monday, and then we had to postpone it because Adam was out sick, so he's been kind of sick this week, unfortunately. Hopefully he'll be better by Friday. Either way, whether he's fully better or not, I think we're probably gonna be ending up doing the live stream regardless. So let's see. That part. Yeah. There we go. Whew. It's a tough pop to get that in there. Oh, this one's gonna be tough too, huh? All right, come on. All right, it wasn't that bad. I'm gonna leave off the side skirts still yet for the time being, because I feel like the other leg, just to get the other leg on there, might as well leave that off. And we're almost done. Now we got the other leg and then well in the backpack and our accessories. So, well, we're doing good. How are you guys doing? Uh, I hear it's great and no better time to start than now. Let's see, MG Shinanju and MG, what is it? Um, uh, MG Shinanju and Verkha Shinanju are about similar cost, $20 difference, your choice. Um, I don't know, I, I'll have to, I would have to scroll back up too much through the conversation to get what you guys are talking about, but. Kits, anyway. If Adam is contagious, then maybe you will have to stream from different rooms like the good old days. That's a possibility. It would be kind of fun. We've talked about doing that just for fun. Uh, have the live stream where he's just in the room next door and I'm in here, but and we'll be on the call together. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. So he's not in here breathing germs all over me because especially with my wife going through her treatment, she shouldn't be sick, which means I shouldn't be sick. So we do have to be a bit careful. All right, back to the foot game. Let's see. Do the fleet lie flat or does it curl off the ground a bit? Uh, my copy annoyingly has this issue, but maybe it's just me. Um, I think the feet should be flat on the ground. The issue is this part. Well, this part that I was talking about, the white part that folds down or folds up for destroy mode. In destroy mode, it won't matter because it's folded up, but in unicorn mode, it should be flat and it should be all the way down, but it doesn't go quite all the way down. So I think that'll end up having to be modified, unfortunately, but the feet should be fine. Yeah, this part here that also folds down, this kind of flap of armor right there, also kind of usually doesn't really like to stay all the way down. And ultimately I'll probably just glue it down or something anyway. We'll see. We'll see, Mr. Unicorn. Uh, guess you can get them, let's see. The gold water side decals, oh, you guys are just talking about, still talking about the Sinanju. Mm. Yeah, the um, Sinanju Verka, the, um, it does come with water side decals, but only for the gold sleeves markings. All of the other markings and everything for that kit, what you get included is all just um, a bunch of dry transfers. I don't even think it comes with like sticker markings like this kit does. Uh, Ryan asked, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you, Ryan, for asking. Doing all right. I can already feel myself getting behind, like time-wise, on this competition entry, but I'm trying to stay positive and just thinking about, okay, what are we gonna do and how are we gonna do it? And yeah, just kind of 
trying to keep it in mind. All right, I'm gonna keep that like that. Let's see, on the first foot, I didn't fold the part that I'm talking about, not going down all the way flat. I didn't fold it forward all the way to the very end. I'm wondering if I fold it forward earlier, if that will be helpful. Let's find out. Uh-oh. See another nub that I missed. There was just so many. What am I looking for? Apart from the top of the foot. Here it is. That goes on here. And probably, I guess, doesn't really make too much of a difference when those parts are folded forward. Because, yeah, even with this one, it does go down a little bit further, but still not completely flat. Pretty much, though, it gets pretty close. Okay, it is better, slightly. Please make the unicorn dab, man. <laughs> I don't know if that's a reference to my hoodie or not, but it's an interesting... Interesting that you point that out whilst I'm wearing this hoodie. But I don't think that'll be making a unicorn dab. Sorry to say. Where's um, um, this piece? Here it is. Hi, Zaku, I have a question. So I want to uh, buy a metal frame for my Zaku Warrior. Is the AE Workshop metal good? I didn't see any reviews and didn't want to get surprised if it was bad. Uh, I don't know about that one in particular. The only metal frame parts that I've experimented with would be for, I think it was the, the uh, MG Barbatos. And my experience was that they work fine. I don't really get I don't really get it. <laughs> the MG parts are the uh, metal parts for the frame for some of these kits. It's been uh, like those have been kind of popular recently. Um, popular in the sense that like um, they're being produced and people are buying them. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Yeah, I, just, yeah, I don't really get it uh, personally. But um, they are a thing. And the one that I tried out worked well, so yeah. It's more so, I think, uh, they don't really do much to like make the build more solid or anything. So like functionally, they don't really serve any purpose. It's really all just kind of a, a fashion more than it is function. And so like, if you wanted to have that look of having real metal parts, and obviously if you paint, you could just paint the parts to look metallic. Uh, and so then doesn't really, it's, it's kind of not really needed. But if you don't paint and you want to have that metallic look, then having those real metal parts gives you that metallic look without having to paint. So um, that's, I think, probably the, the biggest uh, advantage to those kind of metal frame part sets. Mm hmm Certainly. Uh, I don't... This fur cock can't even bend its elbow enough to look like it's having... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, you might have uh, limitations in trying to do a dab pose with this one. I think it would end up just kind of looking... Uh, it might be able to do it. I'm not going to try it out, though, so... Sorry. Um, I'm not putting this part on this. I am going to say, I don't think I'm putting it on backwards. Am I? Indeed I was. So we got that part there, this one here, this one inside of here. 
and this frame part right here. This one, where is it? Here. That back down. Wrong side, bro. Oh, you don't know about me. Wrong side. Did I put something together wrong? I don't think so, bro. Not yet, anyway. I'm trying to maintain my professionality here with this one. And so far, I'm holding it together. So don't don't mess me up. Oof. A little bit easier of a snap that one. Um, what's next? Okay, I am bouncing around a little bit in the construction here as I kind of, I get the idea, I get what's going on with this now. I don't need the instructions anymore. Not for this second leg. I can see what's going on. Hey, I have a question. What is a good first master grade? Um, this. No, um, I don't know. Uh, good first master grade. Uh, fortunately for you, I made an entire video dedicated to that question precisely. And um, I believe the video is called like, um, how to choose the right kit for you, something like that anyway. It's an oldie, but it still holds up. And that basically how to choose the right kit if you're wondering what's the best HG, what's the best MG, whatever, whatever the case is, whatever you're looking for, uh, it comes down to the same kind of formula as it were. So it's an easy one to answer. Because basically just, oh, I didn't build the knee part, kind of missed that. All right, here we go. Um, look at what's available uh, from you know your local shop or online retailer wherever you want to buy from you look at what's available um, choose you know a kit that you like that you like the design of you like the look of maybe check out some reviews maybe that's a kind of optional step if you're really interested but I would say that if you just really like the design, um, you know, then just go for it. But you know, if you check out some reviews and the reviews are like, uh, it's kind of mixed opinion on it or whatever, uh, or is doing the review, if they're maybe not like super solid on recommending the kit, I would say it still just like comes down to you. That doesn't mean, uh, if you like a kit and it's available and the price is right for what you want to spend, you know, but then you see a review and the reviewer is like, eh, the kit's not that great. Or worse yet, if the reviewer says, oh, this kit's terrible, then I would say um, that reviewer is terrible. Oh no, here's that nub that I missed. I saw it and I forgot to do anything about it. Do a quick little cut here on that. There we go. But yeah, I mean, certain kits do have their issues. Um, no kit is terrible though. So I mean, there's if you like a design and the kit is available to you and the price is right. I mean, it's not like a crazy jacked up price. Then I would say get it. Anyway, who is your favorite builder? Oh, that's a good question. Who's my favorite builder? Um, hmm. Favorite builder. Yeah, 
In all honesty, um, it, to choose like one favorite would be very difficult. But in all honesty, like Ryan is probably one of my favorite builders. Uh, Ryan Lau, who is just you know, friend of mine, friend of the channel, and who I was live with last Friday. Uh, yeah, Ryan is probably one of my favorites, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of great builders who I know and ones that I don't know personally, but I mean, like I just follow them online. Um, but I'm fortunate to actually know, and most of them I've not met in real life. A few of them I have, Ryan actually have, um, but, um, I look forward to meeting them at some point, you know, but, um, yeah, there's, I'm fortunate to know, at least like, at least online know them, uh, a lot of really talented and amazing builders. So I'm just kind of uh, fiddling with the legs here a bit to see if we can get this kit to just stand up straight. I said that this kit looks good standing. I didn't say it was easy to get it into a good looking standing pose. There's a lot of kind of fiddling with it involved as you can see here, but here we are anyway. Is that because it has stability issues? I mean, not stability issues. It's just that there's a lot of moving parts and it's pretty tight in the joints, which is good. I mean, you want it to be tight uh, to a degree. You don't want it to be too loose. That would be a problem. Um, and I, that's what I was saying earlier. Like, I feel like this kit probably is going to get more loose. Um, once I start moving it around and doing the transformation and everything else, hopefully I won't break anything. But, um, yeah, it's just there's a lot of moving parts and it's it is kind of stiff so you know to get everything into like just the right angles to get the pose looking right it is kind of tough there's a piece here can't quite get out of there uh also make him sit i don't know about that okay backpack and then we'll do the weapons. Weapons are pretty simple, very straightforward. <laughs> like the the unicorn, just by its design, I mean, is a fairly complex design, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see. But the weapons are pretty easy. Nothing really too crazy about those. All right, there's that. Got these teeny little pieces which go in here. Which, I mean, for a kit like this, and in it, and at that time, um, where are those other thruster bells? There should be there should be two more. Where are they? Oh, okay. Oh yeah. A couple of parts were hiding in there. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say it's a good thing this is on the back and it's not gonna be shown. I don't need it to show for entry because if I've got lost parts, that's not good. But all right, crisis averted. We found the parts. That clips onto there. We're gonna turn that around whilst simultaneously connecting this part onto here. And uh, close that up. Close this up. Oh, these shouldn't be on there just yet. Okay. Gonna have to pop these off. I uh, wasn't supposed to put them on yet. Is the MG Rezel any good? Um, I have built. Uh, obviously, for this uh, project, I'm going to be building two more. 
uh, both the standard type and the commander type. But I have built one before the uh, Defensor B and C type, I think it's called, right? The General Revels version, uh, Masquerade Rizel, which, yeah, again, it was a good thing that that kit came out when it did, because if it were to come out these days, it would undoubtedly be a premium Bendai exclusive. Um, but yeah, the other version of the Timothy Rizel, one that I have built, uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, I don't remember it that well. So, um, but yeah, I'm just about to build two more of them. So I can certainly better answer that question for you in about uh, a week's time. But from what I remember, the MG Rezel is a, it's a good kit. Yeah. It came out a, a few years later after this one, or at least, when was it? Yeah, it would have been a few years. I don't remember offhand. I want to say probably was like 2010 question mark. Whereas this kit came out in 2007. So I mean, it's got a it's got a couple more years of Bandai, you know, evolution gone into its design. Uh, hey, uh, Petite Cherie, hope you are well. I am doing all right. Thank you. Good to see you. This is my first time watching him doing live. Hello, Ice Lee. Thanks for coming as well. I'm sorry to say I'm almost done. And actually, I'm noticing that the camera is frozen. So let me uh, fix that here for you guys. Actually, not the camera. The camera is working fine. It's my capture card is frozen, which unfortunately happens from time to time. So let's just uh, do this here for the moment. Let me change a little, a little setting here real quick. Give me the full screen. Hello, uh, just for a second while I mess with that. Favorite kit of 2023. I need to do, do that. I need to work on that. So I will let you guys know. I plan to do a whole like best of video as I normally try to do. So off the top of my head, I, I, I don't know. I can't think of it. So I'll I'll work on that and I'll be making it as a video though. Uh, let's see. Too bad there aren't any yellow mobile suits. There are some. Uh, the Methus is one. The O is another one. There's a few. Not that many. Yeah, I'll grant you. There's the uh, um, the version of the Origin gun cannon in yellow too. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. That was a really cool one. That's a great kit. Uh, are you, Ruben asks, are you planning to do a live build with the RG RX-78? I wanted to see your updated thoughts on the real grade syndrome is real. Yeah, I definitely am planning to do a live build with that. Um, and I'll be reviewing it as well, but anyway, yeah, I will. It's right over here in my queue. So I'll be working on that soon. Did you see the Solomon Sysalis? Yes, I did. I don't plan on getting it or reviewing it though. Um, waiting for episode two on that entry level painting series. Yes, uh, I was hoping to have that this week for you guys. Unfortunately, I don't think that I will because of time stuff. But yeah, sorry to say. Um, hmm. Interesting. Uh, thank you to Jay, Jay Sienna for the super chat there. I enjoy your reviews and always watch before buying Gumpla. Have you experienced loose leg connection connecting to torso on the MG uh, Sniper 2, the MG Gym Sniper 2? No, probably what with that one, probably you don't have the peg all the way pushed in. Sometimes like the, the hip the, at the top of the leg, the hip peg that needs to connect into the waist section sometimes it's really tough to get it pushed in there all the way you have it in like enough so that it stays in there but it's if it feels loose or it's like kind of popping out uh, too easily you probably don't have to push it all the way you have to push it really hard on some kits I don't remember if that's the case on that particular kit but that would be my guess as to what's going on with that uh, but thank you for the super chat very much so thank you thank you 
and it's kind of strange here. All right, I'm gonna switch back to the other camera now so we can finish this up. There we are. Okay, we're working now. Yeah, the kit's all done. Anyway, uh, we can build the accessories here. Let's see, I just picked up the RG Epion. It seems to not have any typical RG frame parts. Is that something new uh, or have I been robbed? We haven't been robbed. Uh, that is, and it's not exactly new either. That's um, for the past few releases. I think the RG Tall Geese was like the first one that was like pretty notable in its lack of the full inner frame. Um, so that's been a, a thing kind of for a little while now for the, for a couple of RG kits have had that where they have no, none of like the, the RG, um, what do they call it? I don't remember what's the name of the runner. Anyway, the pre-molded frame runners. Yeah. Uh, the gray Zeta is yellow. It's kind of like yellowish orange. Yeah. But yeah, kind of yellowish. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the MG Narrative Gundam? Looking forward to it. Demon Slayer. Yes, absolutely looking forward to it. I really like the uh, the HG version of that. Uh, I've mentioned before that it's one of the few HGs that, like, after... Built. That was the kit that I gave the, the Armored Armor DE to. It was that kit that I painted in gold and I gave it the Armored Armor DE. But yeah, after that, I actually have since then bought a second one of the HG Narrative C-Packs because I just really liked the kit. I haven't done anything with it yet, but I, I have a second one. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to the MG. I think it's going to be cool. I was not expecting it at all. It certainly was very much out of nowhere, but um, I'm glad that we're getting it. So, yep, definitely. All right, bazooka. Hmm, interesting. Were the double O RGs the last to have full advanced MS joint? No, I don't think so. I think there was some after that. But I don't recall for sure. Who am I? Tired. I don't know, y'all. I think I may go to bed early tonight. I don't know. I can't say for sure yet, but I'm thinking about it past couple nights I've been up late working on this kit getting it ready and I was hoping to also uh, have this kit built and um, do a live build and also do the review everything for this kit and the Shinanju both this week but I don't think that I'll be able to get to both and also get some sleep so I may have to make some sacrifices there but yeah being up against that competition clock is certainly weighing on the mind so but you know health is important too especially when i have big responsibilities a wife and kids to take care of with my wife going through a treatment and everything you know i can't let my health suffer but you know we'll do what we can this one Let's see. There we go. One of the issues with this kit, which some of you may be aware of if you have it, is this. The ammo cartridge for the bazooka. For the hyper bazooka. The way that this works. It has this part that slides back for you to be able to put the ammo in here. Yeah, and then it just doesn't really hold it very securely. It's in there, and like you can shake it, it's not gonna fall out, but like if you touch it the wrong way, it's gonna just fall out. No, no. Don't touch your kit in the wrong way, I guess, is the lesson to be learned there. Then we've got the shield and the magnum left, and that's it. I completed the Amatsumina last month, and it still had joints. Oh, yeah, um, yes. The real grades um, Astray and its variant kits do have a full inner frame. Yes. Uh, I think the RG Force Impulse was the first one with a normal inner frame. I've not built the uh, RG Impulse, but I do plan on getting the new Metaverse version of that, which is basically just like a slightly recolored version. 
I do plan on getting that kit. Maybe what I'll do tonight is I'll do a little bit of work and not stay up too late. So I can get some stuff done. Okay. Let's see. Got all the parts for the shield and the beam magnum all kind of mixed together here. But that's okay. Bro, 100% staying up till 3 a.m. now. <laughs> uh that that's the old zaku no yeah when i lived in korea i was uh often not every night but uh often staying up till like two or three that would be pretty common but it's really difficult for me to do that even if i wanted to now um i don't know what happened I'm just getting old i guess but it seemed like it like, you would think if it's just a matter of getting old, that it would be a kind of, like, a slower change going from, like, being able to stay up like that pretty regularly to not. But it was a kind of pretty immediate change. It's like, as soon as I moved to the U.S., I just couldn't do it anymore. So, I don't know. Something about the air here or something about the water here just doesn't allow me to, to do it. It's either that or something about the coffee here. I have a hard time, like, finding good coffee. Maybe that's what it is. And maybe that's what was helping me do those extended hours in Korea, was that I had better and or stronger coffee, whatever, so. I don't know. There's another nub that I missed. It's on the shield, which I will not be using anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but at least for our purposes for the moment. Go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, I mean, you swapped your entire sleeping schedule pretty violently when you moved the whole 13 hour difference. Yeah, I mean, like there was a time difference. Yes. Um, and I think a lot of it was also uh, just the entire I mean, just the stress of the situation. I mean, it, just everything was um, uh what hang on i mean um like just generally you know just like day-to-day -day life during that time I meaning and even still to continuing till now to some degree uh and then like different ways and different reasons and everything but um yeah um It's just been more challenging here, life in general, in the US compared to what it was in Korea, but um, it's all for a good reason, right? So, damn, there's no one too, what the fuck? It's like, uh, must have been like half asleep when I was working on these parts, anyway. So, I think that, uh, certainly been a contributing factor as to why it's more difficult to stay up anymore just because just life getting older yes and also just life taking more of a toll than it once was uh. oop, oop. Um, what's your next live build? I hope I can watch it from the start. Um, the next live build will either be the Master Grade Sunanju or the um, Kotobukiya Galehound. I've got over here also is pretty much ready. There's like a, just a couple of parts that I need to uh, finish getting ready to live build that, but I do want to live build that kit as well. So one of those two is what it will be. Um, you know. Either the Sinanju or the Galehound. Um, probably the Galehound, I guess. I don't know. I was going to say, like, whichever one is built first. Oh, that's just not the right part. That's why that's not. Where's that part for then? Huh? What is this part? Hang on. What is this part? 
Where did it come from and why? Eh? How's it going on? I don't know. I think it's for the... Oh, it's for the shield connection, right? Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, the Gale Hound is pretty much ready to live build, so probably that will be first. Um, the Shinanju, I need to get all the... Finish, I need to finish getting all the parts ready. Everything's all cut out and off the runner, but I need to actually go through and just then like uh, prepare all the parts and everything. So that's probably going to take a couple days and probably won't uh, get to that this week. Because on Friday, there's some programming notes for you guys. So as we're getting to the end of the stream, actually, this is probably a good time to talk about some of this stuff here as I'm almost done. Uh, Friday will be the um, postponed episode, uh, live episode with Adam on the USA Gundam TV channel. So check that out. If you guys have not um, entered to win, if you would like to win a free kit, I don't know, maybe you're not interested, but assuming that you want a free kit, um, be sure to go and comment on that original post for that live stream to be entered into the giveaway for that. Um, we're giving away two kits. Normally we give away one. And like more often than not, it's like a P-Bandai uh, MG kit or something. This time, because we have the new contest going on, the Toys and Tanks contest, we're giving away two uh, two Kodobukiya kits, which are kits that you can use for that contest. But yeah, if you want to be entered into that giveaway to win one of those kits, you can do so by commenting on that post. So yeah, do that. Uh, that is going to be Friday morning. But actually, that won't be the first uh, or the only live stream of that day. Before that, actually, from early in the morning, from like uh, 8, 8.30 is when we're planning to start, I'll be doing another interview with Mr. Chuckle Falcon, David. He is going to be joining me to talk about his GBWC experience and everything. So let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five. That's right, right? Yep, five. Okay, we have one extra one. Um, I'm gonna be talking with David, aka Chocolate Falcon, about GBWC Friday uh, early morning. Immediately following that, I'll be live with Adam on the USA Gundam TV channel. And we'll be doing our normal live stream there and then Friday afternoon is probably when it's going to be when uh, will be the next live build probably the Gale Hound so yep check that out okay this is our shield connection like that bingo all done okay so there's that there's that I you gotta love how wrong the color is for the weaponry here. The um, beam magnum and bazooka both being in this dark navy blue. When, as we all know, they're supposed to be, well, I guess dark navy blue, according to the manual here, pretty much. So I guess it's sort of color accurate, but that's really kind of not the color. Even if you look here at the illustration, it's more of just like a gray. It's not, it's definitely not that. So I don't know. Anyway, okay. This, I mean, the kit itself is also different from this illustration. I mean, there's a lot of differences in just the kit generally. It's kind of interesting in that this is like the illustration for the Gundam and the kit ends up looking so different. But yeah, okay, anyway. Um, that's the illustration for the Gundam, not necessarily an illustration for the kit, so. Uh, that's it for today. Yes, it does look very good. I'm glad that you guys were able to join me. I'm looking forward to working on this kit some more. We will be doing a lot more work on this kit. Probably not as much work on this kit as is going to be required for some of the other kits that are going to be uh, included in the build overall. The uh, diorama that I'll be working on. The unicorn's basically just going to be just like this, lying on top of the base jabber. Um, but it's going to be kind of... I don't know exactly how it's going to be lied. I actually have the base jabber here too. Actually, let me grab that real quick. Let me show you guys one of the issues. 
One of the issues we'll be facing, actually it may not be as big of an issue as I thought. The base driver is pretty huge. I was thinking that um, I'm going to have to modify the base driver to be longer because the unicorn won't fit on it. And yeah, that looks like it's definitely going to be the case, but not by as much as I was thinking. So I want to have it laying on here like this. As you can see, it just doesn't fit because the base driver is not meant to be laid on like that. It's made for the molds to be like riding on the other way like that and just kind of hanging on to the handle. So I will have to make some modifications there. I think probably what I'm going to end up doing is modifying the back end of it to basically extend this out a bit more here at the back. That'll be a lot easier than modifying the front half, I think. So that the front half can basically stay like that. The, the gun will be, you know, somewhere around here. And then we'll have to add, you know, a couple of centimeters to the back end, basically back out over here. So that's why I say like the base jabber is probably the, the aspect of the build that's going to require the most amount of work. There's going to be a good amount of work work required a little on this guy modification and everything. So, okay. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out uh, and for all of the support. Uh, if you guys didn't see the video posted earlier today, check that out. This was an update for an update for the toys and tanks contest that we added kind of a subcategory of um, added a subcategory for you guys to enter as just a photography contest if you want instead of you know a custom modified uh, like a custom build contest uh, is that the MG sized jabby yes this is actually it's the re100 it's 100 scale yes so the size is the same as the MG but it's a, a different grade technically it's re100 Base jabber. This was a P Bandai, P Bandai release, I believe, right? Yeah. Anyway, okay. Thank you guys for hanging out. See you later. Have a good day. Goodbye.